<laughs> oh my god we're live hello everybody oh okay now usually <laughs> i love it 10 9 8 7 6 7 5 4 3 2 medic counting down yeah Ten. okay everybody i think i think we're live yeah and this is your very first live it very is. first one it excited? excited we're so excited to be doing it with you <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. it's a good way to ease into it i yes. feel like yeah so uh, just let us know guys uh because we're, we're obviously monitoring the chat on here because we are so far away from the computer um so um first of all let's make sure everybody can hear us okay let us know if you can hear us okay and uh then also that we're live so if, okay salty medic says out. we can see you can you guys hear us that would be the only thing we ask make sure you turn your volume down yep. on you. just did it <laughs> first one learning first here one, yeah give us a break <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna do great i know it. <laughs> absolutely so um in case you don't know who these fine people are uh these are wonderful people and um <laughs> they are part of the red team from rv unplugged we're not going to talk about uh how we feel about red versus blue i don't think um, you had to go straight into the division art. like that's, I, I that's know, our, but our just... introduction is we're on the opposing team <laughs> they're on the opposing team these but are our enemies that we, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we can reach across color lines yes yeah we can reach we across do have up. names <laughs> my name is Chris and this is Aaron. <laughs> oh, that's your name. Yes. Nice to meet everybody. Oh, nice to meet yeah. you guys. And that they uh they were on the red team. Yeah. Red <laughs> team for RVM Plug. Um we're all having fine drinks. Uh I'm having an agave prickly pear. Mm. Um it actually sounds kind of good. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. I'm having guys... some prosecco. <laughs> prosecco. Yeah. Yeah, just a smorgasbord. Like, it was the one thing in the fridge. So yeah. and we're Crazy. having this sour. We're having a sour. We yeah. got hooked on sours when we lived in the tent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tell us, yeah, you guys are in this now, but you haven't always been in that. That's... Yeah, why don't you guys introduce yourself, first of all. <laughs> okay, so we started our being full-time in January of 2019, so almost on our four-year nomadversary. Yep. And we started in a Class B van, an Airstream Interstate, and it was really great. It was freedom for us. It got mm -hmm. us into this amazing lifestyle, and we lived in that for two and a half years, and then... We really, really wanted to continue our being, but we decided we wanted a little bit more space. So Aaron <laughs> had to convince me to sell the van. <laughs> and he did that by showing me photos of a fifth wheel kitchen. And he said, Chris, this could be you cooking in this kitchen. And I said, okay, let's sell the van. <laughs> let's do it. Dangle let's that do it. carrot. And then okay. I did the swap a -roo. And then we moved into a tent. <laughs> Temporarily. Somehow you're still married. Yeah, <laughs> still together. So it was five months in a rooftop tent, uh, mostly in Colorado, which you guys have spent a lot of time in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the summertime, so it's kind of hot. So we were seeking that elevation. And it was amazing. Like, it was freedom. You know, it's super small and compact. It's just a lot of work. So by the end of the five and a half months, we were just itching to get out of we it. We were so, a little burnt out. Yeah. We had this trailer behind us on order and it took about five months to get it. So that's why we were doing the interim rooftop tent. <laughs> and um, it's been great. So this is a 26 foot travel trailer and we have our one ton truck still. And it's just a huge upgrade from the tent. And there's a lot of space in there. Like we had dinner. Yeah. You cooked us a delicious dinner last night of yeah. green curry and it was so good. And yeah, we like hung out in there and drank some wine. Uh -huh. too much wine yeah <laughs> and yeah i just had a, a lovely evening it was yeah. fun yeah um so for those of the, of the viewers that don't know who you are and kind of your channel um you guys also still run well you have two businesses right because you not only have like youtube but you're also doing something pretty cool during the day our our, our daytime job is pretty awesome so when we quit our corporate careers back in minneapolis we did have an exit strategy we started our own small business. It wasn't YouTube, by the way. <laughs> it was not YouTube, no. That's not a good strategy. No, we started our, our online coaching business. It's called Irene Iron Fitness. And I'm a certified personal trainer and a certified nutrition coach. And I get to help people really find balance and routine and live um, their best life and just feel good. So it's really routine-based, healthy habits, Resistance training is really big, um, trying to get people to put on more lean muscle. Mm -hmm. As we age, we all lose muscle, and it's very underlooked. It, like, as a nation, we're so focused on obesity, and we really need to be focused on gaining muscle and gaining strength and longevity in our future 
years. So I'll keep this short. I'm starting to ramble. I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> but I do get to work with the most amazing clients. One-on-one -on -one coaching. It's private. It's customized. And everybody's amazing. And then usually three times a year, we'll do a group challenges. That's cool. Group challenges are a great way for everybody to get involved at a really low cost. And it's not as big of a commitment as the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Maybe some people are not quite ready for that and they just want to like solidify healthy habits. So that's for you. Our next one is January 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so how we got into YouTube was, um, you know, to help kind of our business grow a little bit. We're like, you know, we need to get out in front of people somehow. And that's well, you know, YouTube naturally was a good outlet for that. And so I stuck Chris in front of the camera because <laughs> I didn't want to do it at all. Like not at all. Yeah. And we started doing like uh, cooking videos in the van. So our van was 22 feet. It's pretty small, but it was a nice airstream. It had a nice kitchen and had everything, you know, beautiful van. But uh, she started doing the cooking videos and then, and then we would sprinkle on a little bit of the RV lifestyle and like our travels and stuff. And so the RV lifestyle and travels like went way up and the cooking stuff was, <laughs> you know, my, my dreams of having a uh, what food network series show just <laughs> yeah. deflated. Oh. Like oh. I could just see my cooking show of you is like not surviving there. Aaron was like, Chris, we're going to have to change some priorities. We had to pivot a little bit. So Irene Iron Travels is our RV channel and we do uh, boondocking and RV lifestyle and travel and things like that. And, you know, and I Oh, are we back? Let's see. Oh, are we back? Are we here? <laughs> yeah, we lost you. Lost you. Lost you. Hold on. Lost you. I was never back. Drop down. Hold on. Are we We're back? back? Can you see us now? They. <laughs> You're back. Yay. Yay. Oh, see, that was so. so did you see Chris and Katrina in there? Yeah, we yeah. got Chris yeah. and Katrina, and, uh, and we got I think Ryan's on Ryan's there. Ryan. Yeah. We miss we you guys. A bunch of guys. We see a lot of our Irene Iron. Irene's, we'll call you. Yeah. There's a lot of Irene's out there. We're happy to see. That's awesome. Somebody so awesome. asked if um we started a new workout routine because of them. I am interested in the challenge and JJ. Yeah. Like how did I, I, I used it. to work out a lot? Like we were in the best shape ever, like two years ago. And then you started <laughs> RVing? No, 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 this is when no, we were, yeah, while we're on the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, because you have to like really figure out different ways to get in your fitness, especially if it's yeah. a rainy day or something. You guys yeah. do a really good job of working out in the RV. Yeah. And the so, hardest part is the routine. Yeah. Like routine. keeping yeah. the routine. Yeah. Because yeah. we, change, we change our 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 backyard and our front yard and our like everything yep. changes. That's true. You know, sometimes daily. Yeah. You yes. guys just drove 1,700 miles. You know, like, what kind of routine did you guys have for five days? Right, exactly. But I think yeah. the important thing is their answer was not yet, but yes, there will be. That's right. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. We just got a soft commitment there. <laughs> Very soft. Which, you know, in our being, that's that's pretty that's the typical. Yeah. Yes. 80 to 90%, right? Weren't you saying last yes, night? Yes, we were. Yeah. 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 You guys could be on the other side of the country, like, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we are monitoring the comments. Yeah. Um, if you guys have questions, please like throw the questions down. Um, I have seen some already coming in. Um, somebody was asking if we still love our Navion. Yes, of course we love our Navion. Yeah. Um, I know we've been alluding to and kind of hinting that something is coming. And that's true. Uh, <laughs> we we do have something coming. We just can't tell you about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be very exciting and very different. Yeah. Um, but we are not getting rid of our Navion. Just no. to be completely clear. Uh, our Navion, we absolutely love, and I don't know if we're going to keep it absolutely forever, but we might just try. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll spill the beans. We're doing a swap. We're, we're swapping. Oh, now that RVs? Would be, yes. Now that would be. We're doing an RV I swap. don't know if you trust us telling that thing. <laughs> the key, you know, I, I've always wanted to do that. I've yeah, always wanted to I do that. Too. Yeah, yeah. That would be fun. Swap. That would be fun. Somebody asked on Instagram um, if you guys were teaching us about truck and trailer life, and is that our possible next RV? Mm. <laughs> um. Here's what I will tell you. It is not a towable product. 
we are we're not we're not yet going to do a, a total product um but i would definitely do like a key swap kind of thing for you know like for a weekend or whatever i think that could be really fun that would be um, fun yeah i'd love to do that with you guys because actually i mean i you guys are 26 feet yeah 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 we're it's 20, a really easy tow and we're 25 feet so yeah yeah when you guys are hooked up with your car behind you it's probably the same length as that's true as that's true yeah. yeah it's just a different type of towing yeah yeah it's pretty fun to unhitch and have the tremor to roll around in, take on some hikes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think that's our favorite part about being in a towable is just like having that big truck to yeah. take on excursions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a we have a, a CRV, which is just as high performance. <laughs> just as high performance. We, we as you've seen in our videos, we take it absolutely everywhere it shouldn't go. Push it to the limits. Yep. Oh, Lou, I mean Lou, if you're watching, the car is still in great shape. It is. <laughs> Thank you again, Lou. It's yeah. it's Lou's wonderful fault that we have the uh, the new CRV. Yeah, he asked how Louie's doing. Louie's doing great. He's right behind us. I don't know if he's showing up in the screen, but he's chewing on a bully he's stick. He's got his eyes closed he's, in the sun. He's yeah, living his he's best life. He's doing really good. Yes, and he he's loves Scout. Scout is and his Louis girlfriend play together so well. They are and, so yeah. cute. I'll have to yeah. post a video I took of them earlier. Like They just will run around and chase each other for hours if we let them. Mm -hmm. They're adorable together. Piper and Ella kind of have always done their own thing and they don't really like care about other dogs anyway. And Scout, because she was a Mexican rescue dog, like a street dog, she gets scared of other dogs a lot. So it's like really cool when she finds a dog like Louie who she just absolutely loves. And they're just so fun to watch together. Yeah. Somebody asked Aaron, if we could do it all over again, would we get a dog? I, like, like asking, was Louie a mistake? <laughs> oh, oh. That's an interesting question. Um, the answer is a hard yes. We would get Louie again. Yeah, and our, our love for him just grows like each day. You he's know? so sweet. Yeah, we're yeah. actually considering getting a second dog. Yes. How's that for an answer? Oh, oh. Yeah. We do it again. We're gonna get a second one. That is a juicy tidbit I'm that we haven't shared that. yet. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's that another soft, soft commitment. commitment. Like somebody maybe seventy percent. Somebody said yes. We need a scout and Louis video. So uh, yeah, uh, I'll post that, yeah. yeah. But I will say, yeah. RVing with a puppy, especially like a tiny puppy, that you have to go through that training process and like the potty training and all that was difficult. Like the first, I don't know, you know, six months were were very difficult. Like, yeah. We, and we still have trouble leaving Louis uh, alone because it it takes time, you know, and he has like certain anxieties, and so. Um, like he gets that from me. Yeah, <laughs> taking after his mom. And uh, but no, we can leave him like up to six hours alone. And um, you know, we just did a big hike like earlier this week, and you know, he he does fine there. So uh, yeah, he's yeah. great outside on hikes with you guys. Yeah, yeah. but it's it's tough. It is a, a challenge. So there is that way off that you gotta <laughs> you gotta. Can can yeah. I just read? I just gotta read this comment. Um, hello from Minnesota. Yeah. Leaving soon for the. SW Southwest. Mm -hmm. So if you are homesick, I can stop at the Lutheran Church and get a green bean hot dish <gasps> with string fries and cream of mushroom soup on top. Your thoughts? Oh, um, that sounds dish. like a step above a tater tot casserole. <laughs> so Phil, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds good. I would actually really, really enjoy a nice hot dish casserole right now. Phil so from what's... Phil asked Phil from uh, today is someday. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, asked us. From Minnesota, what's the food that is from Minnesota? Like, what's the local cuisine? And it took me a second to like think about it. And, and the answer and hot dish was like hot one dish. Of, one so, of what is a hot dish versus like a casserole? Is it's it just it's the same, same thing. thing. It's the same I think thing. It's regional dialect yeah. of like how you're talking. So about. it's okay, yeah, a thirteen thing. by nine inch pan, <laughs> and you put it's a bunch a hot of, dish. You put it, whatever you have. Usually, there's some condensed soup of one form. Usually, like cream of chicken or cream of mushroom. There might be some pork chops in there or some chicken breasts in there. <laughs> and tater tots is a common thing. We like to have crunchy stuff yeah. on the top. I feel like. Okay. I never ate them. Like, <laughs> no? that, really? That is not my jam. So my second thing I said Minnesota was known for was walleye, like fresh shore. N North shore. North shore, like walleye. Is mm. that a fish? Yeah. yeah oh, walleye. okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a really good lake fish. Okay. Like, yes. Interesting. Really good. Nice and flaky. <laughs> um, so no. uh, put it in a hot dish. That? The uh, hot dish guy you, had yeah. a follow up. He said, for dessert, I will get the Hawaiian fruit salad in the cut glass bowl. Oh. oh. What? Mm. I mean, so what is bringing that? us back to the, the basement. Fruit like, salad, like fruit jello salads. Oh. It's a jello salad? Yeah, like a jello salad with some tropical canned <laughs> fruit cocktail inside. Okay. I can picture that. Now, I personally never enjoyed 
the fruit salad jello and whipped no. cream on top i think right yeah like it was pretty much just sugar in a bowl sugar basically. mixed with more sugar <laughs> Um, we really started like a food thing, so I'm just I gonna know. like it's, it's a, a shoestring, shoestring potato potatoes sprinkled yes. on top. Yes, the the picnic onion, picnic onions, shoestring, <laughs> shoestring onions, picnic onions, like French's onions. I yeah, think picnic like French's, was like a brand crunchy of crunchy little French's onions. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I'm learning so much. I, Ryan I, says, "Good golly." jeepers creepers who doesn't know about a hot dish yeah and ryan's from wisconsin so from, yeah from miller's in motion he is yep. from wisconsin originally so he knows all about this stuff i know we we are just unfamiliar with these things I these to, delicacies of the know, north people people ask us like how many states have we traveled to and the truth is minnesota is actually one of the states we have not traveled really to. you've Ooh. never been there no we've not been to it's minnesota in the summer wisconsin oh my gosh um North Dakota. You guys should go like to Bayfield, Wisconsin, and see the Apostle Islands, mm -hmm. and go kayaking. Oh, it looks like incredible. they look in yeah. incredible. The Great Lakes. Go camping on Madeline Island. Okay, we're gonna we'll get send a, whole you a bunch of. Kids. I was gonna say yeah. you're saying a lot of words. I mean, like this sounds great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, Madeline Island. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, sounds um, like a good place to go. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, words. Um, but yeah, so like that's one of the states we haven't been mm -hmm. to yet. But I I think that's a lot of RVers like last place to go is. The, some of the midwest states for some reason well, i don't know it's just not it's like it's not the sexiest place in the country you have a lot of weather to worry about i mean as far as the window yeah. is smaller like it's yeah. really hot in the summertime and it's really cold in the winter time there's a lot of snow and so you got like yeah. you know smaller windows to... well it's funny because okay i just realized michigan is another one mm -hmm. we haven't been to michigan we need to do michigan mm -hmm. yeah we um, to michigan. i really want to do michigan i want to do the up mm -hmm. i think that'd be amazing i mean uh was it was mackinac 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 mm -hmm. it's pronounced yeah okay get it right <laughs> i haven't been there i haven't been there so yeah there's there's definitely a lot of the midwest i want to want to explore uh let's see we got any uh oh yeah where are you both couples going to spend winter months oh good question mm -hmm. Well, Aaron and I are going to be roaming around the desert. We're going to be in California and Arizona. Nice. Yeah, and you guys are going to the other side of the country. We are. Possibly. We are. Well, Tampa. Well, yeah. We every year, uh, so we will be at the Tampa RV Super Show. So if you're going to be there, let us know yeah. in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But we will definitely be there, and we cannot wait to see all of you. We've never um, done the Tampa show. Oh, oh my god! Like, ever. Yeah, ever. I think like our conflict is we are in the escapers community. And every year the escapers does their annual bash like oh, the same Havasu? week. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. Havasu the yeah. same week? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. The same. it's literally the there's same a little bit week. of overlap, but so you could technically do both, but you'd have to like fly. You'd have to fly. Yeah. I had Not no idea. That's yeah. a bummer. So we will be at the escapers bash in Lake Havasu in January. Yeah. And the escapades. And the escapades in Tucson. In Tucson in March. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're looking yeah. So there you go. So if you're going to be yeah. on the West Coast, head <laughs> to, and uh, are, are tickets still available for the, the Big Bash? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. I don't okay. even know if they're for sale right now. Really? This soon? I think they went. Their... No, I should know this. I should know this. <laughs> we're putting you on the spot. <laughs> I would, I would say, um, I would say if fiction, you want to go, <laughs> you could still get tickets. I don't okay. think the door is closed for tickets. <laughs> uh, somebody said they're going to Escapade. <clears throat> Uh, oh, oh, Don, oh, yay, and Danny! Says, yeah. and then Donnie's gonna be at yeah Tampa, the Tampa RV show. Yeah, I know we got to figure out details and like there's gonna be a bunch of different events going on and a whole bunch of fun stuff. So we'll do like a meetup and <laughs> Kirby DM missed the beginning. Don't know if you answered my question. Oh. We didn't, but it was such a great question. Yes. So, uh, so the question was that uh, I'm gonna paraphrase. Um, we always talk about places that we love to go, but what are some places that you didn't love when you went there? And that's actually a really, really good question, and it's leaving a stump. I know. It's, we, we actually I'm were talking pressed. about it a couple hours ago, like when you actually first posted it. And I, yeah, I don't know. I can share a Walmart story <laughs> yeah. because cause this was our absolute worst. So this was in 2019. It was about six months after we left. So we were pretty fresh to RVing. We were in our Sprinter van, and we were on the East Coast. Um, and we're traveling up the East Coast. It was really fun. We we're having a lot of like fast paced travel. We're staying at you know a lot of Cracker Barrels and those were like nice and safe for us. And and a Walmart was like the only option outside of Boston. So we were uh, very close to Boston. So it was kind of a big city, kind of a urban Walmart, if you will. And we got there at like, I don't know, maybe five o'clock at night, kind of earlier. And we noticed there was a lot of like people that were starting to show up like vans and like RVs. 
and the activity started to get a little weird where like the van started to turn up to like meetups and you can kind of tell like local people living in like different vehicles were starting to meet up but they were way on the other side of the parking lot and we were like way over here kind of by a couple of semis but the cluster formation was making us a little nervous yeah it was kind of like there it was like a get together yeah. and they're, they're outside of their rvs and like hanging out and like kind of getting loud and rowdy and i think it was probably like a friday or saturday night <laughs> so the, the long story it's a wild night at Walmart. Short, is we ended up going to bed you know closing up all the curtains going to bed and i woke up at around 11 o'clock and that big cluster of like all these people living in their vans moved to where we were and they were like completely surrounding were us. surrounded us you know Ooh. so immediately i was kind of like oh what's what's this all oh, about like That's lord of the flies kind of yeah okay. and then i saw like flames and fire no out the window and I had no idea. And that's no, when just, Aaron woke me up. It was like, it's yeah. time to go. And I'm like, and, and we yeah. actually left. And we left. Like, and we drove like 45 minutes or an hour to a Cracker Barrel that was way out of the way that we didn't want to stay at. But they were like cooking outside at this Walmart parking lot in like an outside grill. And it was like at this, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And like, I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and so that was like our absolute worst experience. We don't like staying at Walmarts very much. And that's not. I'm not going to say typical of Walmart activity, no, but, yeah. but it, still, was, it was not fun. It was just one of those like feelings that we did not enjoy. And, right. Uh, like yeah. your spidey senses are tingling and it's like. Yes. Time to go. Right. Yeah. And that is the great thing is that if you're ever in a situation that you do feel uncomfortable or like something's just a little off or not right, it's like mm -hmm. just pack it up and go. Yeah. Yeah. And usually the only thing that really does drive us out of a location <clears throat> is when the weather changes. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the location itself that is like off-putting. It's usually just the weather, the seasonal time. Oh, like, yeah. like right now we're in Utah. It's starting to get a little cold. California's calling my name. <laughs> time to head. We'll west, see yeah. where we end up. I know it is. It's funny because like I can't think of a place where I'm like, oh, I just hated it there. I no. think there's definitely places that we enjoy more, and places mm -hmm. that like once you go, you're like, okay, I don't need to go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I've never regretted visiting any place. Some of the campgrounds you like end up at, you know, like where you're a little bit too close mm -hmm. to your neighbor. I'm talking like five or ten feet where your slides oh, like yeah. on the and it's like it, you know, that's not enjoyable. There, so actually, certain so certain parks could make the list of that wouldn't a, go back up to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If we're talking if we're talking that, then there, so there's actually one that maybe have you guys stayed? Um, there's one in the um, membership system that you guys have mm. uh, that's in Tampa. Um, and it's a very small park, um, but it's like right in, uh, it's actually, in, I think it's in St. Pete, Caitlin. Mm. Is that right? You we have not been to Largo. Oh, it's in Largo. Okay. It's yeah, in Largo. I don't think we've been to that okay. one. Well, this one in particular. It's very much like they pack you in like sardines. Yeah. Like, like yeah. your, your neighbor is right outside your window. Yeah. Um, and there's very little patio space, and then there's very, there's almost no space on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like um, an urban park, like it's, it's a an city, urban park. City yeah. park. Yeah, yeah. like uh, you know, it it is definitely you're packed in there like sardines, um, and it's like no apologies. It's like this is <laughs> yeah. this is what you're gonna experience. Yeah. And I I feel like that's one of the few places where we had a reservation and we actually left early. Did Be we? Oh, we did. I remember, I must have blocked it out. We left early because <laughs> it was that bad. It was pretty bad. It was yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. 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 Just because, like, we like to be in. I mean, look, we're we're in beautiful area right now. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah, yeah this you know, is... I mean, this is we love this. We love mm -hmm. this. I wish campgrounds somehow could be like this. <laughs> yes, you know, can you imagine like your campsite is like this? That'd like be a... pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is our campsite. Or you could just come here. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, in like a like a campground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Be amazing. Definitely. That's amazing. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> well, Kathy <laughs> is asking if we're ever going to come to the Northeast, Aaron, Kathy, and Rebecca um we would love to go back up yes. to the northeast mm -hmm. have you guys done it in the once. RV? we yeah. did it yeah. once in the van, in, the van. in 2019 19, yeah. and it was really fun um mm -hmm. we went all the way up to bar harbor bar harbor a lot of times Maine as, is so beautiful. as you travel like in an rv like you know sometimes you're in an area and then you like move and move and move and then you haven't been to that area for a while and then you miss that area so like it kind of calls your name and you you head back that way mm -hmm. and for some reason the northeast is one of those areas that we just it, it's kind of for some reason out of the and way and that's a, you need a full hundred percent commitment to yeah. go there that's like <laughs> you really need to be like yeah we're gonna do that you need to plan it a little bit better especially now that we're towing and we're not in the van the van was so easy to just whip up there yeah, yeah the roads are and, the bridges yeah. are shorter the roads are a little older and like mm -hmm. the highway systems are a little different and so it takes a little bit of planning but we are missing uh louie 
Louis chewing on Louis, something. Back there. <laughs> we are missing uh like the big cities of like you know Boston and New York City and like um I'll be right back and we'll go check on Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody crap. Well and all the seafood and everything that's up in yeah. the area. It's just so good. Yeah. So good. So <laughs> a, a Louis intervention real yes. quick. <laughs> Um, so another question we got on Instagram was, could you share your cleaning routine since you live full time in an RV? I think it's interesting. I actually just spent the last like hour quickly cleaning. I think for me, cause I really like things to be nice and neat and clean. It just feels better, especially in a smaller place. But I find myself like sweeping daily, you know, vacuuming cause we have dogs and dirt gets checked in and stuff. So like mm -hmm. cleaning the fo floors more regularly doing dishes out as we use them, that kind of stuff. And then I do more of like a deep clean on the bathroom and all of that, like every couple of weeks. Yeah. So what do you think about you guys? I agree. I think it's critical to eliminate all clutter yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. Cause the clutter, like all of a sudden it just erupts out of nowhere. Right, it's like spilling out of places. And then you feel like <laughs> your RV is crashing in on you. So you need to keep the clutter to a minimum. Yeah. And every once in a while when the stuff kind of like, and it usually happens when you're camped somewhere for more than a week yeah. and you look like you're living in your area, which you are. And then all of a sudden it will be like, Aaron, we need to take 10 minutes and just, tidy and just up. get rid of all this clutter. And then a big part of our routine is every time we do relocate and we, we get somewhere, that's when I like to pop the slide open and get our vacuum out yeah. and vacuum. If I'm really ambitious, I'll Swiffer. <laughs> yes, like, I know. I'm mop. Like... <laughs> you know, just so like smells clean. And then, like you said, like sweeping twice a day is just part of the deal, especially when you're out here. Yeah, tracking dirt, dirt in and, and out and all day long. The dogs. Yeah, I'm definitely a big believer in changing your bed sheets like religiously, like because your Aaron never wears socks or shoes. Hey, I just got <laughs> back from helping out Louie. I don't know what I missed. But... <laughs> you and your darn lack right of socks. Away. He, so he took van feet from the van and he, he brought van feet with them into the trailer. They're actually clean right now. Oh, that's clean. I like how we by all the way, showered today. You could actually that show exciting. that off. Like, <laughs> like he's like lifts his foot up and like you could clearly see the bottom of his foot. <laughs> So it's I nice. do change sheets. I have like three sets of sheets on board. So we do laundry at the laundromat every two and a half weeks about, which means we have a big, big stash of socks and underwear to like keep us through. I'm totally rambling. You asked about our <laughs> cleaning. cleaning. Like, this is yeah. what we do. <laughs> well, I know. It's, I mean, it's not that different from living in a house no. in the sense that like, yeah, you want your space to be clean and everything. You just might be doing it a little bit more frequently because yeah dirt's getting tracked in more and all that kind of stuff yeah so. it's, it's a smaller space so like it uh it gets dirty quicker mm -hmm. but it cleans up quick yeah so it's but it's that constant like balance between the two yeah yeah i was gonna say too the irony is today we literally had somebody come up to our table we were having breakfast um and they recognized us and specifically we're so appreciative <laughs> of the advice we provide them about laundry and um, Chris, I think you were saying like that you guys have like an extra amount of like, you know, essentially like underwear and whatever, because yeah, that is a challenge. It's a challenge uh, when you live full time on the road. It's like, how do you do your laundry? Yeah. And do you have enough clothing to get you to the next point where you can be at yeah. a laundromat or mm -hmm. if you're staying with friends, you know, yeah. using the friends. So laundry. it's more of the undergarments, the socks and the <laughs> underwear and things like that. Things and that you, you don't re-wear. And then you got to re-wear <laughs> your sweatshirts and yeah. jeans. Yep, shorts and, and jeans. And, yeah. Right. And it doesn't take long to be on the road to figure out what you need more. So, you know, when we first started like really boondocking and not having access to laundromats on a regular basis, Aaron would be like... I'm out of socks or I'm out of boxers. And I would say, well, we need to get you more boxers because this is a problem. <laughs> right, we're not gonna, what a profound conclusion. <laughs> we need to buy more. Let's right. go get some more, <laughs> increase our supply so that we can be a little bit relaxed on our laundry schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not have to do it as often for sure. <laughs> do, do any of you sniff test your clothing sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's works. a personal question. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> It's a 50-50 <laughs> when it comes to the couples here. Yeah. Um, let's see, just real quick. Uh, have you traveled US-1 from Maine to Key West? Yes, we have. Not Actually, in like one fell swoop, but we've done like... Yeah, um, we've, we've done almost almost all of it mm -hmm. um we've definitely done the southernmost portion we have a whole video series on uh the florida keys that we did um as i love a, the keys so yeah much. the florida yeah. road trip it is really worth it um there is 
beautiful camping along the way. Um, not a lot of boondocking, just to be clear. Right. You, do need, yeah. you do need campground reservations but because that beautiful. books out so far in advance, particularly in the wintertime. Yeah. That's exactly how it works for us. When we go to the East Coast, it's like we pretty much are staying in campgrounds quite a bit more. And then yeah. when we go to the West Coast, we do a lot more boondocking. Yeah. And that's kind of like the balance of it. But yeah. Um, and then also, you know, if you're all east and it's summertime, it's hot and it's humid. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to be out when it's 90 plus degrees and like 100 percent humidity. And yeah, talk about needing some extra underwear. <laughs> right. Well, that's actually it's funny. So that's part of the reason why we've been to Alaska twice uh, in the summer times is because the weather is incredible up there. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. Like it's great sleeping weather um, because it's very mild at night. Uh, and this, and in the daytime, it's again very mild. Yeah, it's like this. It's like this. We you haven't know, like, been. We've had some friends that have been, and it's just. I'm assuming it's absolutely. Oh, it's, it's incredible. Amazing. incredible. Yeah, like yeah. bucket list. You got to do it at least once. Yeah, yeah. it is a quite a drive though. Like, isn't it like six thousand miles, like up and back? If you yeah, it is. so it's far. further. So from Seattle to On Anchorage. Road. Um, we actually have somebody who's from Alaska who's watching us right now, but um, uh, I believe from Seattle to Anchorage is further than Los Angeles to New York. Wow. Um, so that's yeah. how far it is basically from the northwestern border yeah. uh, to Alaska. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, round trip, uh, I suppose that's about right. Maybe four or five thousand miles uh, round trip. Um, I mean, we've done 80,000 miles now in four years. And I would say a huge part of that has been these epic trips that we take up like to, up to yeah. Alaska and back. We were just talking about how far we've driven. We only do like 10 to 12,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So a, about half of what you guys have done. Wow. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Half the mileage. Wow. My mind is kind of blown right now. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Wow. We go, well, we go, and in the beginning we were going way too fast yeah. too. Somebody asked us that the other day and just about like lessons learned and that kind of stuff. And yeah, that was a big lesson to learn in the beginning because we felt like, you know, the world is your oyster at that point and you're so excited to hit the road. And then all of a sudden you're going to all these places and fitting everything in really fast. And the burnout was real. Like at the end of year one, I was ready to call it quits because we were just going way too fast. And so we had to kind of like, yeah, take a couple of weeks, to like reset. And then I was ready to get back on the road. The planning can yeah. burn you out. Yeah, too, it like. really can. And that's kind of why we started. That's why we loved the van at first, because we didn't have to plan very much at all. And then once you get your electrical system set up and you can, you know, be off grid a little bit more, you know, and we use the thousand trail system, like for campgrounds and stuff. And it was just easier to not plan as much. And, uh, it's stressful to plan. It yeah, really yeah, is. Like, yeah. Yeah. But some people do enjoy that where like they have the whole year planned mm -hmm. out. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's like, and you need to in some parks, like yes. in the keys. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You have and to I get think those it's different too. Like if you are like truly retired, like we would do so much more planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because it's so time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I yeah. could see that. Well, and, and I can certainly think of situation. Oh my gosh. My, my birthday. What was it? Two years ago. Oh, we we didn't, didn't know that day where we were going. <laughs> yeah. We're literally having breakfast in a Cracker Barrel because we had spent the night in Cracker Barrel. Yeah. We're and... like, do we go north? Do we go east, west? Like... <laughs> yeah, that's right. We didn't even know which direction we mm -hmm. were heading. Yeah. From that yeah. day. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful feeling. That yes, is, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. I mean, and it that's took a me a long extreme. time to get to that point mm -hmm. because I was very much the planner. I thought yeah. that we needed to have everything like, yeah. you know, religiously planned out and mapped out and knew where we were sleeping every night. And yeah, as you get more comfortable with it, at least for us. Yeah. And comfortable in your home. So yeah. when you could, when you park that RV in, in a parking lot or in a park or in a campground or in the boot, like your home and you feel more comfortable in different areas and things yeah. like that so it gets easier yeah um i just real quick uh so tia sent us a super chat thank, thank you guys you, so much uh and if you don't know what a super chat is it's basically just yeah. a way of like kind of tipping your hat to us um it puts your question right up at the top so if you want to make sure that we see your question you can obviously do a super chat um tia asked do you ever watch a scary movie and get scared when you're staying in isolation all the time oh, yeah. yes <laughs> like, every time i'm like why do i do this <laughs> that's that was a great question. And Aaron um, really loves horror movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, you know, we're into, we definitely watch horror. We watch murder shows, you know. Yeah, like the, a lot of true crime. Yeah. We're really into, we're into Unsolved Mysteries right now, which is, I mean, talk about some spooky, scary stuff. Because that also yeah. goes into like the, um, the supernatural and yeah. like Bigfoot and UFOs <laughs> and that kind of stuff. Yeah, they have topics like all over the place. Yes. They do. And then when you're out here camping in these like very remote areas, you're like, I don't know why to watch that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. I don't like to watch I'm those like, at night. Is it locked? Are the doors locked? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Could Bigfoot open this door? It's very me? dark out here. Like it's dark skies, beautiful stars, but 
scary when you got to just go out in the Isn't middle it of it. Kind of shocking that there aren't really many RV related horror movies. <laughs> let's just, uh, let's just let's change keep it that the way. subject. Let's keep it that way. Um, well, I was going to say too that like we, we've been watching, and this is not even a new thing, just over the past several years, we watch a lot of the foreign dramas, and um, foreign dramas tend to be quite like scary like they, they the dramas have a lot of like kind of horror elements to them mm -hmm. um like uh we're watching this one called dead wind right now and uh it's it's set in uh is it mm. finland yeah finland and it's like it's a it's like a um a, a crime drama mm. uh you know so yeah. it's like you're following the detectives and all of that and the the crimes are scary, like actually <laughs> scary crimes. Like like it's not just your oh you know everyday American murder. No yeah. no it's like it's like weird twists uh, to the to the crimes. Um, and yeah, I do think it freaks out uh, at least Caitlin. <laughs> um, I uh, I like tip my hat and I'm like hey good night you know mm -hmm. and I and, and I'm out. Yeah, Howard just goes to sleep. He's like it's fine. Yeah. nothing's gonna happen. We're fine. Did you hear that noise? Yeah. <laughs> There's a twig snap outside. <laughs> one time when we were in um, the Walmart, a Walmart parking lot, <laughs> a different one. This one was, a theme was near White Sands in Albuquerque or New Mexico. Yeah. It was super windy, super windy. And I thought the bikes on the back of our van were literally being stolen. Oh, because it was just it making was, so much noise. It was and so rocking. noisy yeah. and they were right there and you know it's a Walmart parking lot in a big city and I just was up for four hours listening to the wind shake those bikes. You're like, around. when are they gonna get them off? <laughs> <laughs> just take them and let me go back to yeah, bed. Yeah, I would like to right. go back to bed. Now. I'm very tired. <laughs> I think I even woke up Aaron. I said, Aaron, yeah. I think somebody's stealing the bikes. And he told me and to I, go back to bed. I think I literally said, honestly, do you think somebody is stealing the bike six inches from our head? Because we were that's where the bed was. Like our head was literally six inches from the bikes. I'm like, right, that'd have to be a really brazen thief, which they exist, but like they do. But the bikes were still are... there the next morning. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'd like to point out we have 118 people right now. Oh, thanks nice. for hanging out with Thank us, guys. guys. I really appreciate that. I feel the love right now. Yeah. Um, so uh, somebody followed up and said, true crime podcast during drive days and hearing one from places that you've been. Uh, are driving through or staying at. Yes. yes. We've actually, this several times. Recently we, too. Yeah, because we um, we were driving through Indiana and then we were listening to a uh, true crime podcast about a uh, terrible murder uh, that happened in Delphi, Indiana. Delphi, Indiana. If you're familiar with that one, yeah. And so it's there a terrible was, story, by the way. There was a recent like major development in the case and we were driving through Indiana as this press conference was going on. Yep. And so we were like watching the, or listening to the press conference and then listening to the podcast. And yeah, that, you know, was definitely like, wow, it's really close to home. So, yeah. And it was like just south of that, too. Mm -hmm. right? It was like. And then we um, National Park After Dark is a really interesting one because they dive into um, different crimes or things that have happened within national parks. And so we can relate to those a lot because obviously we've been to a lot of national parks. Right. And some of them are just, yeah, really like fascinating and sad and things that I just didn't even know happened inside some of these national parks. So that's definitely an interesting one too. I've heard of people living inside of a national park before. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, I've like definitely heard like, about that with national forests. Like it's no, in the national, in the park. national park, you know, some national parks like Yellowstone, for example, Bless you. Is huge. <laughs> like it's just right. It's, miles and miles. It can be <laughs> so remote that, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of resources in yeah. the national parks as far as like trash and toilets and things like that and so you could theoretically yeah i read like, like a story about like a transient person that was homeless and basically was living in the national park and that kind did of did you re recall which park no i think it was in when we were like in like yellowstone i'm thinking it was, yeah. one, of, it was one of the bigger ones where yeah. it was like you know some of those national parks like it like yellowstone for example it takes you you know 45 minutes to drive like right, from one end to the other yeah. yeah well you should see the ones in alaska you know so like uh is, is it, it wrangel st elias is the largest i think so yeah. i think that's the largest one in the country it's and bigger it's, than like several states combined yes mm, which wow. is yeah. wild yeah and it's so huge. like if you take like the next like four uh u.s national parks in size it fits inside of this one park oh wow well an entire mountain range wrangel st elias is like an entire mountain range it's absolutely enormous um, and there are, by the way, people who do live inside of it because the town of McCarthy is completely surrounded by the national park and it is deep inside yeah. of the national park. And so like there's one road, it's a dirt road that leads inside the park. That's how you get to the town of McCarthy. 
or you can fly in. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so <laughs> those people literally do live inside the national park. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Loopy was asking, Loopy's one of our good friends. What kind of dog is Louie? Basenji. She recognized him. Yeah. Yes. Louie is a Basenji and most people don't know what a Basenji is a or have never heard of them. And we found that the state of Utah, tons of people recognize him to be a Basenji. <laughs> so I don't know what it is about Utah, but there's a lot of Basenji fans here in the state. Yeah. Um, maybe it's the, because um, that's an Australian dog. No, African dog. African. African dog. Um, nope. There. No correlation. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I'm like, I'm like, well, this could, I suppose, look like parts of the Australian Outback. Um, We're digging but, deep. Uh, That's a dingo you're thinking of. Uh-huh. I know, so but this, the, this is Africa's fully... version of the dingo. So Thank you. The uh, dingo is the wild Australian dog. The Basenji. Is I nailed the, it. The wild. African <laughs> I, dog. I did not nail it at all, but yeah. I. But that was. An and America concept. has a wild dog called the Tennessee dog. Has anybody ever heard of that? No. No. The Tennessee dog. I think I read about it. And um, like a wild dog, it's a yeah, wild dog. And they're breed. in the south. I think it's something to do with like the Tennessee, name, Tennessee yeah. area. But yeah, they're also they kind of look like a um a wild like they all the wild dogs kind of look a little similar for and some reason. Lori said barkless dogs, and we yes. were just talking about how yeah, he rarely makes a peep. He liked this cute little playful bark at Scout yesterday, but I yeah. think that's like the only noise I've ever heard him make. Yeah, very quiet dog. <laughs> yeah, that's usually when he does get vocal, is when he wants to play with another. Oh, like, hey, yeah. play with me. <laughs> yeah, he's very social. He's he is a giant love ball. Yeah, so we had him tied up to the RV right behind us, and he was. I mean, he just wants to be with us, and he just he loves people and loves dogs, and, and he's so cute. Yeah, so darn cute. <laughs> uh, somebody just said they they watch and subscribe to both of our channels. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Thank we we you. love that, and, and and honestly, we love sharing uh, other channels, you know, and and introducing you guys to other channels too. And vice versa, yeah. These guys are so awesome. They're just awesome people. I know it's been fun to hang out. Yeah. Um. Can we talk about RV unplugged a little bit? Because I feel like that's like a very <laughs> Did timely. You see Ryan's thing. question. <laughs> no. What? What did Ryan <laughs> say? He, oh, I gotta go back and find Ryan's it. Ryan's one of the also uh, Miller's in motion. Uh, also one of the contestants <laughs> on RV unplugged season one. Um, he said, "Somebody ask an RV unplugged question, mainly so I can be nosy." Hashtag <laughs> Team Phil. <laughs> uh, yes, Team Phil. Yes, Team Phil. We were on Team Phil. Um, so, um, RV Unplugged, we have to be really careful just to give you a heads up because we can't really talk about what happened in the show. You guys got to watch. It's yeah. going to be so good. Um, because of confidentiality, uh, we can't talk about it yet. Um, it will actually start, is it March or April? It's March. 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 Yeah. Early March. Like mm-hmm. the 9th or 10th. They just line. announced, uh, when the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't oh, even get to tell you guys too. Yeah, so, so if you go to rvnplugtv.com, they have the whole schedule for the release dates, and then they actually just released a full itinerary of the rally. Yes. So there's a karaoke night. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. There's lining. Fun. There's a May the 4th barbecue. Barbecue. There is, there's a whole, yeah, they have the full, like, schedule of events. Some of the seminars are still TBD. Um, but there's a big RV Unplugged rally coming up in May. It's May 4th through 8th. Right, so save the date. Uh, if you want to camp with us in Texas at the site of where we did all of these shenanigans, <laughs> May 4th through the 8th, save save the date. Um, I don't think tickets are on sale yet, um, but there will be uh, a lot more information on rvunplugtv.com. Yeah, there's going to be like yeah. live music and just yeah. like all kinds of fun stuff. They're really doing a good job, I think, of like mm-hmm. they're going to make it a lot of fun for everybody who's going to be there. And it's just, you know, RV rallies are a lot of fun in general because you're getting to hang out with so many different people who are all into RVing. And yeah, and the last episode is going to be watched live. Live, there. yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, like... that's the timing of it. Yeah. yeah. So the finale, we will all watch the finale together and find out who won season one of rv unplugged yeah uh, i will say <laughs> i think everybody at the end of the rv unplugged filming was burnt out exhausted <laughs> and needed some time to decompress yeah it was definitely a lot more of like there was of course like physical challenges and things like that but yeah like the emotional and mental stuff that we went through i don't and think was, any of us it was were over ready two for that. weeks so yeah it was, it was. over two week time yeah. commitment for all of us and it was it was a lot like it's just a you, you don't intense. think about it and yeah. a lot of like they did a really 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 good job of not, not telling, telling us, us anything. yeah well not telling us anything and we didn't know who else was involved and that was super cool because we all show up and none of us knew each other Nobody knew each other. I think, like, we obviously knew Phil and Stacy. Um, but that was a, that yeah, was it. that was it. And we all, like you said, we all came out yeah. of it like as really good friends. 
and that was just such a cool thing about it mm-hmm. yeah we went I from complete it. strangers yeah. to like right family. That's, that's, i love that i love that about the show i thought i thought it was really well done um and i can't wait for you guys to see what happened during it i mean some of it if you watch the trailer um, you can clearly see that we were ziplining. There, one of the one of the challenges was ziplining, but with a twist. We can't tell you what the twist is, but it was not just normal ziplining. You had to do something while you were ziplining. There was always a twist to whatever it was we were doing. Yeah, and they, they did kept a great us, job. They about always that. kept us on our toes, and yeah, it was, <laughs> it was yeah a lot. <laughs> yeah, and and the other thing I'll say too about it is, um, even if you're not an RVer, there's mm-hmm. a lot of the challenges. Was, I'd say it's almost like 50-50. Um, we're about experiences and adventures that you can go on as an RVer or as a traveler. Uh, and then the other half of the challenges were RV related and somehow correlated to like things that every RVer has to do on a regular basis. Um, again, we can't tell you what they were, uh, but they always had a twist and um, and they definitely figured out how to make it like really hard to do. Like even if it was something we're like, oh, no problem. Like I'm a seasoned RVer. There was a twist. There was a twist. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I, I'm I'm afraid to just say too much. About it. Yeah. Well, I'll close on this. I think you know, travel and RV is about getting uncomfortable and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone because that's where you grow, right? Yeah. And I think this experience really did that for us all. And I'm definitely glad that we did it. Yeah. 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 And that's too. why we signed up for it was to push ourselves and put us in a situation that maybe we didn't have 100 percent control of. Right. And mm-hmm. and yeah, to grow as people and. And to just uh, experience some new stuff and meet some new people. Yeah, we wouldn't be sitting here together right now if it weren't for that. Yeah, like, that's what's really cool too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. it was awesome. I I will say too that you know um, going into it, we were like we knew the name of the show. We knew it was called RV Unplugged. Yeah. Uh, and that therefore the expectation was it was going to be dry camping. And I'm like, oh no problem, because in 2020, as many of you are aware, we went 125 straight days without hookups. Um, so we can definitely dry camp but the best of them, even though we're in a small RV, I mean, that RV behind us right there, you know, the, the tanks aren't very big. We have to make sure we conserve water. We have to really watch it, particularly when we're talking about two weeks. Um, so we were really doing everything we could to try and stretch our tanks as far as we possibly could. Um, but we had no idea what else was going to be involved. <laughs> yeah. And so walking into that with, yeah. the, with the challenges that, that there were, I would, I would say that would be that. the easy part yeah. for, for us that are used to it, but not everybody was, was experienced. Yeah. Yeah, some, that's this right. Is some people's kind of first times almost dry camping and yeah, um, more than a day, maybe. Uh, Grateful Glamper. Grateful Glamper. Oh, yes. And um, Miller's Emotion. Miller's yeah. Emotion. Yeah. Like they, they were not uh, boondockers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and coming into this, it's like, what do you mean? Like, I don't have hookups. <laughs> yeah. know, Ryan actually said, can I have full hookups this time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Miller's emotion. Um, yeah. You know, it, it is, it is different. It is different, but you know, there's always trade-offs, right? I mean, um, if you want to camp out here in the beautiful, I mean, we're, you know, we're in the, I guess you would call it like high desert, you know, of Utah. Um, there's a trade-off. The trade-off is you don't have hookups. Yeah. So you need to, and by the way, just because you want to boondock doesn't mean that you have to have, fancy electrical systems and all that like you can figure it out uh you can run generators that's gonna you be could, yeah. you could water. do it in a tent like yeah. you can do it in a tent <laughs> you yeah. could do anything you want to do like there's gonna be a lot of high highs that outweigh the low lows mm-hmm. and you Definitely. just have to like commit to yourself damn that's good you like good. think like that's, good that's how she sums up the tent there's a lot of high highs <laughs> and there's a lot of low lows living in a tent. but it's like something i'm going to talk about till the day i die yes it was one of the best summers of our lives. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, the highs outweigh the lows for sure. And they actually, part of the um, rally I saw on there when I was quickly looking at it, there is going to be like a big boondocking like seminar and like best practices kind of thing. So if you're interested in learning about it, yes. um, that's going to be a great way to to learn from people and, who do it all the time. I have no idea who's hosting. Have, I don't know who's hosting those. Do like, they have hookups the there or we don't even know? any of the details like if it is all dry camping or if it is some... that's a great we'll find I, um, well, I mean, out yeah so i we don't think, i don't think there is no. i think no. it is a dry camping event i think it's dry camping run generators yes mm-hmm. that's what i was gonna say is i think it's i think it's broken up by zones so i think that mm, if you right. have solar hookups there's an area or i mean sorry <laughs> solar hookups <laughs> if you have solar uh and like lithium batteries um then there's an area that's like a quiet zone you know so you don't you won't be around people who are going to be running their generators, but there are areas where people can run their generators um, and still participate in the event, mm-hmm. you know, cause I, I think that's really wonderful that they're being as inclusive like that. So that way 
um, even though they're not going to be having hookups, I think um, there will be um, rows and areas for any type of RV year. Yeah. It sounds like a different type of like RV event, RV rally. Yes. Like, I think it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's well, and, and I a love big, big party. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they're extending to like, it's not just a show. It's also the community, you know, and like they're trying to build also, I feel like this community around the RV unplugged um, yeah. phenomena. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that's what it is. It's a phenomena. It's, <laughs> it has taken off. I didn't know that. It has taken. It, off. it is now officially a, <laughs> a phenomenon. Pheno phenomenon. I declared it. <laughs> so Kathy no, just but... asked, which do you prefer, boondocking yes, or perfect. hookups? We go through phases. Oh yeah. We mm -hmm. we go through phases. Like like I said, in 2020, it was 125 straight days of no hookups. Um, was that because of COVID? Mm -mm. No, no. That was actually, unrelated. so the first half of 2020, we were in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, as as a lot of our viewers know, um, we started the channel when we entered Mexico, and so we spent the first five months of 2020 in mexico and then um the remainder of the year in the in the u.s um it was a pure coincidence it was like literally what was the first park it was um oh it was flagstaff and Co it was coconino, coconino national, national forest, forest. Mm. yeah and so we got a taste of it that was the first time we'd really truly done it and we just kind of got hooked yeah. and as you guys know when you're out you know in it's the addicting. west it's very addicting and then you're like okay well, what other beautiful places can i find and how long can i push myself and go mm -hmm. you know that's not to say obviously we needed to dump our takes every you know couple of weeks and things like that yeah but yeah it was just we just wanted to see how long we could go and do that that became like almost a game like how far oh, yeah. can we go yeah. like, gamifying it you know yeah. like, <laughs> like if we don't pay for any camping and we're and we're dry camping continuously can we do it across the country the answer is no because once we got to <laughs> kentucky, kentucky our streak um, ended. our streak ended yeah um, because we could not find any like uh, there was nothing close by we were visiting family and uh so we ended up paying for a campground which was totally fine the streak was over but like okay so for example when we were in maine uh, and Nova Scotia and all that, we were paying for camping that whole time. Yeah. And we were in camp. Yeah. Cause like, as you guys kind of alluded to in the East, it's just not, there isn't the same wide open spaces and public lands and, you know, this kind of yeah. great free camping. It's mm -hmm. just different. Yeah. How long could you guys go on? So a know, single tank. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> on, on a, a, a time like on one you reset. Know, could, could you guys last five days or a week or two weeks or if we're being really conservative with our water, um, we could go about between 10 and 14 days. I wow. Think. That's really, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. 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 Because I mean, our tanks, um, you know, and we have big tanks by like, this you know, size. this size RV. Yeah. Can, well, I mean, they're, you know, they run from about 30 to almost 40 gallons, depending on the tank. Is your black tank 30? Our black tank is the largest. Our black tank is almost 40. 40 oh, yeah. wow. That's yeah. really big. Yeah. We were only one week in the van, but our black tank was 15 gallons. Oh, wow. wow. So, well, and we have yeah. friends that have cassette. I mean, well, uh, yeah. Tanya oh. and Dave. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Echo. Yeah. yeah. Um, There's you know, was under five, five, five gallons. Mm -hmm. Five gallons is a cassette. That's I could not, I just don't think we could roll with that. <laughs> well, it's people. just different. It's just it's different. different. I mean, yeah. and the, the truth is, is like, and I don't want to wax poetic about like cassettes, but <laughs> cassettes do give you flexibility because you can empty those anywhere, like, you know, a, a public toilet, public bathroom. Um, and so you don't necessarily have to go to like dump stations. Right. Right. So there is that flexibility. The other thing too, is that you can, you can eject one cassette, put another one in. Yeah. yeah. And so fair. people do that yeah. too. Oh, okay. That's yeah. That's a good oh, point. Well, that's yeah. a good way to double it. Yeah. Or triple it. Um, by, by a third. How much space do you have for extra cassettes? That's the, that's <laughs> how the many cassettes question. can you carry on board? The answer is seven. Uh, two of our favorite channels. Thank you. Curious if you're using Starlink for the live stream. We sure are. We oh, wait, are. can you see it? Oh, no. no it's, it's just right there. It is on top of that pole. It's yeah. right on top of that pole right yeah, there. We just set it up. Uh, well, yeah, it's just outside the frame. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yes. we're using Starlink. We've had it for since the end of March. We love it. But you guys actually, this is a very timely thing because you guys yeah. have a video out today about yeah. an alternative. Yeah, and we're not using Starlink <laughs> because... Well, you have Starlink. But we but, have Starlink. Yeah. yeah, it just, we literally haven't used it for a couple months now, I think two months. And uh, we just, we have a new uh, system called the Insti Connect. I, that's the video I just did today, but we've been reviewing that for like three months now. And it just, it works everywhere we kind of go. So uh, we still gonna keep the, the Starlink as a backup because it, it does require cellular, you know, connectivity and mm -hmm. if you're in a place where you don't have that yeah that's where starlink is really gonna oh absolutely shine i for, yes. for us it's been a complete game changer and and um uh, those of you that you know follow us 
uh, pretty regularly um, because of our day jobs. And, and we still provide marketing services and communication services to companies all across the country. We need connectivity. Mm -hmm. It used to be a major driver and a, a restriction for where we would camp because yeah. we needed connectivity every day. And, um, and that did limit us. Now, I don't even care. Like now I know because with Starlink, as long as I have a clear view of the North sky, yeah. I'm in good shape. Yeah. Um, it has absolutely freed us to stay anywhere we want. But that's kind of on that's been west of the Mississippi, mm -hmm. right? I mean, well, east of it gets a little more because even, even tree coverage even is an trees, issue. Yeah, yeah. Trees yeah. are definitely a challenge. And like um, the actual whatever constellations in the sky, like they have less of them <clears> up there. Like, I mean, Starlink's map itself says, yeah less coverage in the whole like that's eastern correct. area yeah, yeah well and and some of that um so then it gets yeah. more spotty but you have multiple cellular carriers we do yeah. so we have, four, we have four cell four cellular carriers yeah. plus starlink yeah so we actually have five different ways to connect to the i think internet. with starlink and a, you know a major cellular network like verizon or at&t or sprint or t-mobile like you're pretty covered yeah like mm -hmm. in 90, and when when working from the, the road is like your livelihood, it's important. It's a good investment to make yeah. because you have to work. We have to have connectivity. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I, I will also say that um, not that they're making it more complicated, but now because Starlink just introduced the new like uh, in motion yeah. dish, which is a flat dish. Um, <clears throat> it's bigger. Now, what do you do <laughs> now? Now, like, do we get one of those and figure out how we can quickly like, ground deploy because see ground deployment is still really important for us yes we put it up on top of this pole here um but like sometimes with tree coverage or whatever we want to run it way out you know we have a 150 foot long cord yeah i just don't um, think we would i don't know like it i know it'd I, be nice to have it running 24 7 though that's i yeah. think the would benefit be nice. of it like <clears throat> because what sucks about starlink is that you have to make that conscious decision do i set it up do i tear it out do i and it doesn't yeah. take long but it's it just one more thing that takes five minutes to set up Absolutely. and tear down right in your camp like <laughs> yeah. you know that's our being like everything you get like e-bikes that's you know another yeah. five ten minutes like chairs right. and tables and grills and fire pits and it adds you, up as yeah. Your stuff, yeah all <laughs> suddenly of a you it's gotta, an hour to set up camp yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 um uh, we got this question on instagram it says and i like this do you have to try hard to look happy on your vlogs or oh. is it natural oh. Oh. <laughs> so how good of an actor are you guys i think it's what um there i but think I, that anybody who has met us in person will tell you um we are genuine we are yeah, actually we try to what keep you it real. see is what you get. And I mean, would you I've agree definitely with that? cried yes. on YouTube. <laughs> yes, 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 Howard. Yes, yes, Howard. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> the way I look at that is if you had to act or portray something on your YouTube channel, that would just be frustrating and it would take all the fun out of what you're trying to do and exhausting so and it would be exhausting try to keep up like a be separate persona so, yeah. yeah that's the great thing about youtube is that you get to be yourself right and you get to you know showcase you know whatever you want to showcase and right. people out there will find that and yeah want to join in and, and you know just remember too we're not live streaming our lives 24 7 like we you know we all have bad days right <laughs> like, yeah. yeah yeah you get to kind of pick and choose like when you pick up the camera and when you don't yeah you know? if you're not in the mood right yeah. yeah and i think it's important too to map out and have that downtime and not feel like you have to be on all the time because we do we want it to be authentic and we we really do love you know recording and sharing things and inspiring and yeah but yeah, yeah it's like you you can get burnt out if you're doing it all the time and and, and the good and the bad mm -hmm. i mean we <clears throat> we don't really pull back on sharing the bad stuff yeah you know when yeah. bad things happen we share it um because i i do think that's important i i don't want anyone to have this perception of full-time travel like it's just painless and it's always great it's always sunshine and rainbows because the truth is Sometimes it's really not. There's yeah. a lot of sacrifices and a lot of stresses on the road. to RV life. A lot yeah, of stresses. yeah, and you have to be flexible and kind of learn to go with the punches and all yeah. that. Yeah. But the more you do it, and the more you practice it, the better you get at it, the more comfortable you are at it, and just the better it gets. And yeah. same thing with YouTube. Like you start out YouTube, and it's kind of a struggle because it's challenging <laughs> and it's a lot of right. work, and you got to get comfortable in the camera and and, and all you that. You look back at your old videos. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, wow. Yeah. And then you know, after a few years, you're like, you kind of get into the groove of it, and it's part of it is just part of your life and, and you get good at it and uh, it's fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are, we are actually exactly at an hour now. So what do you guys think? 15 minutes? Is this our 15 minute warning? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 15 minutes y'all. 
So <laughs> 15 minutes. Um, so Our son's about to go. Like, I know. Yeah, it's been beaming yeah. me in the face like yeah. this whole hour. I'm trying see. to like, I know. <laughs> you can see this square right here. That's the laptop like shadow. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, uh, Aaron, why are you censored out? Uh, why do you have so, your lap right now? So I'll tell you what's funny about that is like, uh, it's basically like a sundial, right? Like, so when Aaron's face is blocked, the video is over. Yeah. Yes. yeah. The channel is over. Uh, um, so, um, <laughs> I do have to run to that. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, Caitlin so, said actually we're quitting right now. Like no, that's, no. we're done. So uh yeah, so uh put your questions in. Um so about 15 minutes left. Uh yeah, so we'll stop in uh 5 15. Uh, so that's uh 7 15 Eastern. So 7 15 Eastern, the end. Um okay, let's see. Finn. Um, Finito. What is your least favorite task or chore, not including black tank emoting? Setting up Starlink. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Least favorite task. Um no, I actually, I don't have any problem. And Caitlin, uh, Caitlin and I both, like, you know, we we dump the tanks. We do all those kinds of things uh, yeah. together. You um, said not including dumping the tanks. Yeah. What else? I think just that. Okay. Yeah. Emptying, yeah. Uh, Kathy, yeah, we totally know what you meant. Yeah, emptying that is, Least right? Least favorite. I feel like I definitely have a least favorite, but I'm drawing a blank onto what it is. I feel like there's something that nags me. Um, you know, I could go back to, like, the planning thing. Like, I hate to plan. I really don't like planning that's my least favorite thing to do um is it amazing that we're all like totally silent right now <laughs> yeah we're stumped can't find question. anything to complain stumped. about um caitlin what? what's your least favorite part about uh rving my least favorite part about RV. or your least favorite thing to do like yeah. <sighs> oh that's hard <laughs> i know it's like we all kind of you, i think you you get used to it and it's just like oh, it's part of your life sometimes i just am overdoing dishes Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like nonstop. Oh, the dishes. Yeah, because we, yes. we all love to cook. We love to cook and we love to eat. And so that results in a lot of dishes and you don't have a dishwasher. Like yeah. we are the dishwasher. That's, that can be challenging. Yeah. And when you're dry camping, conserving yes. water uh, does get old after a while. Like, you know, the short showers, uh, yeah. you know, washing dishes with a trickle of water or using paper products. Like, you don't, we don't like to do that. Right. And that's sometimes why it's nice to balance it and go into the RV park for a week or a couple of weeks, take those long, hot showers, yeah. you know, run the water, you know, the flush thing out the pipes. That I really look forward to, to being plugged in and hooked up is being able to wash my face with water because when we're boondocking, mm -hmm. I use face wipes Yeah, morning and night. Yep. And I just really want to wash my face with hot water. Like that's <laughs> the number one thing that I miss Yeah, is just washing my face. We all took a shower today and we were all, we, oh, did, we like, felt like, we're, 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 we're like, it's shower day. Yeah, we feel glamorous. Um, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny yeah. that we like all decided to take a shower today? I mean, not together. We <laughs> Separate, separate showers. <laughs> RV showers are not that big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. guys, never been in that RV. will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if people even wanted to. You're not, you're not having communal showers. Yeah. Um, uh, Next question, please. Well, I love the big fan of Chris and Aaron, but never heard of New State Nomads, but still looking forward to watching folks do it. Well, and then somebody asked, um, what your YouTube channel name is. Yeah, so Irene Iron Travels. Yeah, they're actually, I think they're tagged in the description. Yeah, so if you guys click that. It is yeah. kind of funny. Both of our YouTube channels are about the same, right around 40,000 subscribers. Yeah, they are. And it's kind of funny that, like, you could have tens of thousands or, like, you know, 90% of them have never heard of us. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Like, Isn't that amazing? And yeah. I think we do have very similar personalities. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're both, we're all, like, positive, And while we do share the realities, we're not dramatic. And right. we don't use no. like negative drama no. No. to attract people. And I think that's really important because like we're all about positivity. Yeah. Yeah. I but I think we agree. do a little bit different style of videos. We do. You mm -hmm. know, we do. Well, and I think that's a great point, right? Because see, in the end, um, some people get really hung up on this idea that it's like my competition, my competition. It's like there is no truly there's no such thing on YouTube. You, you do not have competitors on YouTube. Because the audience, the overall global audience is over a billion people. Uh, you know, there's one over one billion views a month on, yeah. the, on the platform. Yeah. Like, it's amazing when people from the other countries comment and like say, hey, watching from, you know, Africa or watching from yeah. like New Zealand. And it's like, it's wow. So cool. Yeah, yeah so cool. it, it's amazing. And the thing, too, is that like, look, just because like they watch ours 
uh, then they maybe watch yours and then maybe watch another one. And the thing too, is it's not linear. It's not like, you know, it, yes, we are doing a live right now. So maybe I guess we're competing against anybody who's doing a live right now, but if we're releasing videos, you could watch that video anytime. And so that, that's that nonlinear aspect to it, I think is what really opens it up to the fact that we want to do collaborations like this because we want to introduce you to people like them, <laughs> you know, because they, they have an amazing channel and they do amazing adventures too. And yes, we have different styles. Like I, I would, I would argue, I, I think we are like a destination channel. I feel like people watch us because they want to get inspired about uh, particular destinations and we show them uh, where to go and, and what to do. You guys, I feel like are more lifestyle almost. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. you know, it is more about yeah, that. Yeah, you guys have a little bit more polish. If that's the right <laughs> oh, word. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, you're a little bit more buttoned well, up. Than because me. you're actually oh. doing these destination videos. Okay. Like, and we are doing more lifestyle, like day in the life. We're, so we're kind of like in the same areas. Mm -hmm. And like, yes. But, like we, but we, two different, but two different uh, videos, videos of that uh, boondocking spot right outside of uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, yeah. Mm. And yes. I watched your guys' video when I was there because I was looking at stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. And because you guys did a destination, like you went to like, you know, these different areas in the town. Did you go to the farmer's market? No, we didn't do that. I don't think it was and the Santa did, Fe like, farmer's market. Like, like, um, like the boondocking. I think it was and, like, running at the time. Oh, it's the, like one was of the awesome? best ones we've ever been you to. You guys went yeah. to like, uh, I think, um, like a, they have a hot spring. Yeah. Aaron's going to tell you what you did <laughs> Here's while what you, you were there. <laughs> Aaron, remind us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually don't remember. Yeah. The hot spring I, was I think part of it. was a hot spring. Mm -hmm. You guys went there to was. Like, eat at a few like. Local yeah, places. I but think I remember... you had a burrito with chilies in it. Yeah, uh, it was good. I remember. I remember yeah. you said, mm. uh -huh. um, uh, "Yeah, Ojo Santa Fe." Yeah, Ojo Santa Fe. If you ever get a chance to go, is the hot spring that yeah. we went to, and yeah, that really is an nice. incredible place. So, if like you place. watched both those videos, it'd be interesting because ours is like more about the boondocking spot and the land and getting there and setting up and and you know a little bit like cooking and the rv experience yeah yeah and you guys like did a little bit right, of like, like going there but most of it then, was about yeah. more of the destination and so if you watch stuff. both of them yeah. i feel like that's a <laughs> good you like you get everything. a no, good true. holistic well, you get and, a robust experience you do <laughs> we went to the farmer's market yes yeah. i see, know we well, didn't and do that see, and, and there you go like, right cool. and, and that's what i think is so cool too about like different uh different perceptions right or different um uh what am i trying to say like different um viewpoints of the same place you know, we both went to the same area, but we had two entirely different experiences. And so that's what I think makes YouTube wonderful, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I'm really I'm very pro YouTube. I'm very pro um, introducing a lot of people to a lot of different channels because I just feel like we all have different perspectives and that's what makes it so cool. Yeah. OK, we got a couple more good questions. There's two about decision fatigue. Do we ever get decision fatigue? Yes. Um, people are like, where, you know, where's the grocery store? Where's the gas station? Where are oh, we going to stay? Yeah. The list is never ending. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Again, that gets better with time, mm -hmm. but yes, a lot of decision fatigue, but you get better once you know, like what kind of apps to use. Like we have a dog, you know, and mm -hmm. so you guys, so we use bring Fido bring to Fido help is us amazing. know where yes. to bring Louie if we want to go out to eat. You know, you get used to like apps like Campendium or websites like Campendium to know where That's to a stay. Great one. Yeah. Read the reviews. You can kind of trust it. You get used to like, um, you know, just being flexible, like grocery shopping, for example. Like, yeah. you know, you just don't get hung up on needing to buy certain things mm -hmm. or shopping at certain places. Like, just be flexible and really embrace what the area has to offer yes. yeah. and do what you can with what's there. And like, that's what immersing yourself really is, right? Yeah. But yep. decision fatigue is a real thing. It is. I yes, think it, it is. happens to everybody. Yeah. We get asked a lot how we pick the places uh that we uh feature and and the truth is is that um we just do a lot of research we we yeah. try and find local blogs we try and find locals um because i always feel like the local perspective is gonna be your best perspective in my in my mind because yes somebody can visit 10 times but it's not the same as a person who lives there day in day out yeah um so i i try and seek out um these local voices um, and by the way, like if anybody's watching and you guys are like a YouTuber for like a specific area, please reach out to us because <laughs> we love partnering with you guys. Uh, if you want to take us around and show us your favorite spots, we would love that. Yeah. We'd absolutely love that. Sounds fun. Yeah. Okay. Somebody said, um, so how about our favorite task and tour when setting up? Well, that's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> for me, I think it is pushing that slide out <laughs> and deep clean on everything. And when you are done setting up, everything is pristine. Yeah. Did you talk about that during the cleaning segment? Because every time we get to somewhere new, uh, Chris does like this maybe 
10 or 15 minute no clean. it's like a full hour <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i don't know if it's it takes long. a full hour to to clean and set up the inside when i do you it want it proper. to feel good yeah, it's so like I, a reset i'm it setting is. up so the place. outside i'm doing the tent you the always tent. finish <laughs> like 30 minutes before me. <laughs> i'm cracking the beer and like sit, making sure the chair still works meanwhile so i'm it's, still working you know, in transit <laughs> yeah and important. then when i go inside it really does look beautiful in the rv like it's clean it like it feels like home right like everywhere you go like you have the comforts of your home that is kind of fun that that fresh new set spot. where everything is clean and Tanks looks are great empty. yes it's such I a cut out feeling. my fake green plants yes yeah. like everything like that candle yeah. like you... the candle yeah <laughs> do you guys have fake plants tell us in the comments uh fake plants or real plants yeah because um we can't we can't have real plants actually because we travel so much across borders so if you go we'll into canada or you go into mexico you actually can't bring real plants across the borders because of the dirt mm -hmm. um so it's a it's yeah. an issue of, of pests I you pests say your dogs eat them no, although like, Ella with all her cats, issues right now would probably eat them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but no, uh, so we can't have them. So we, yeah. um, we just very early on because actually we well, had real plants to start. We did, and then we and went then, to go across into Canada for the first time. I well, I gave, we like, no, I gave them all to my best friend in Tampa. Yeah, she's still house sitting my plants three years later. <laughs> yep. I think yep. fake plants do the job. They, they do. do the trick. They give they, you the ambiance, but yeah. it's one less thing to have to keep alive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> only have my fake little christmas yeah. tree said um donnie oh that's funny. That's holidays great. that's an interesting what do you guys think about holidays on the road in, oh that's on the actually road? good because that we're can coming get, up yeah yeah and that can get a little tricky because you can get a little homesick mm -hmm. um you know because you don't have that house and that big christmas tree and like maybe the big oven and the cookies yeah like your family thing. yeah family and i didn't even talk about family <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> like family the christmas tree and the presents no. <laughs> But there's a lot of that yeah. stuff that you it's, it's definitely true. different and i mess. think hmm that yeah that is hard last year was the first year i really was like i wanted to do some traditional christmas like thing like mm -hmm. i wanted the tree you know i, I do you miss did. that That's yeah true. yeah there's something That's about true. that like the mm -hmm. nostalgia yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 somebody asked us about like commute oh no i remember what it was i i was asked at a a, a winnebago event recently um, what's the thing that you miss the most about uh, living on the road? And, you know, my answer was community and, um, and tradition, you know, because like when you live in a place on Friday nights, you meet up with your friends and you go yeah. to the bar or the brewery or whatever it is, like you have your traditions. Yeah. Um, you make new traditions when you're on the road yeah. and, um, yes, you're not necessarily able to hang out with your best friend, you know, like, or you have that regular brunch date or whatever it is. Yeah. So instead you figure out how to do virtual meetups or you figure out um, who's going to be in your area. So that way you can all hang out together. Uh, yeah. You make new friends who are RVers, those types of things. Chris likes to send postcards to like people. That's great. Uh -huh. like when we get to certain areas, like handwritten postcards. That's awesome. Yeah. And there's something so special about getting that Snail in the mail. mail is mm -hmm. like, it's like cursive writing. It's like a lost art that people <laughs> don't even know what it is anymore. So sometimes yeah. I sign my postcards in cursive writing just for like double smile. <laughs> That's great. No, I do love sending mail. Um, it's of course it's easy to like text people and call people, but I just feel like it's an extra special thing to drop something in the mail. Yeah. Right. It takes and then effort. wait, yeah. wait for seven days. And then you get this message like, oh my God, thanks for the postcard. It makes me so happy to get these. And yeah. My grandma used to travel. My grandma and grandma used to travel throughout the world. And so when I was little, she would send me postcards. And I, I've kept them all. And I still have them. And I think, yeah, that's, that's like cool. such a, I don't know, just a neat moment, memento that somebody was thinking of you while mm -hmm. they were out traveling the world. Yeah. yeah. That's really special that you do that. That's so cool. Um, I think we should probably wrap it up. Yeah. Do do it. Hey, you want to come back over here, Aaron? <laughs> Aaron, if you want to join us, we're about to say goodbye. I know, join, if, join you well, then. if you look, the shadow is... It's almost it's there. Almost, yeah, yeah we're, we're very close to Aaron's sunset, <laughs> as we're calling it. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining. We still have 125 people who are literally watching wow. right now, which is totally what awesome. What did you guys Sticking think of your first live? End. I thought it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'd do it again with you guys in a heartbeat. Like, yeah. it's just, just hanging out. Yeah. Just it's talking. It's a little bit easier maybe to do with four people because then you have a little bit, you know. You have some energy to yeah. bounce back. And more people to kind of, like, watch the comments and, and interact yeah, with right. a little and bit. Right. questions so and everything. Yeah, I'm a little tough with two people, but I, I like it. It's fun. 
yeah, yeah. maybe we'll do uh because we we have like we use software for this and so like we can do remote uh where like we can have like split screens so like maybe we're on one side of the screen they're on the other side of the screen or whatever like, that'd be so fun. yeah we could totally mm -hmm. keep doing this do another yeah. live yeah maybe you guys will host it next time oh oh <laughs> big responsibility that sounds, like, planning that sounds, that sounds like a 70 percent and... commitment scale oh, that we'll 70, say, that's yeah. pretty good yeah we could do that hey 70 is better than 30. <laughs> I'll take it. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much. And yeah. literally, the sun is know, dropping as we speak. Down. This is amazing. I can finally look. I, think. I know. Now uh, I see. Yeah. Oh. Um, thank you guys. And we'll be uh, back next Sunday with oh, our, our Hawaii, episode. Hawaii episode, which I know you guys are really going to want to see. Mm. Uh, it's mm. awesome. I'd like to go to Hawaii. I would like yeah. to go to Hawaii. Um, what do you guys have for next week? What's your next week video? Um, I think it's going to be Capitol Reef, Ooh. Utah. I want to see that one. Yeah, yeah. our Capitol first Reef. time at Capitol Reef. Now yeah. we've checked off Almighty Five. Yes. Capitol Reef was the last one, and oh my gosh, don't skip it. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, cool. something special happened. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right, guys. Well, we will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. And awesome, awesome questions. Thank yes. you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. We'll see you soon. And I'm going to reach over here. <laughs> yeah, the, sun, the sun is like so oh, perfect I right know, now. It's like great. beautiful. <laughs>